Do you want to find an interesting Tej discussion chat or a teammate to play with? Join the Hardware Lab Discord server using the link in the description. The variety of graphics settings that are available in modern games can be pretty unclear for the average user, but some of them are considered to be super obvious and intuitive. One of these at first glance is a resolution. However, there are a lot of hidden details behind this option. Actually, there are a lot of misunderstandings about the resolution in terms of real-time 3D graphics on the net, widespread usage of NVIDIA DLSS, AMD FSR and some other high-quality upsampling techniques makes this understanding even more confusing. This series of videos aim to explain some key things about converting calculated 3D scenes to a 2D picture that you get on your screen after each game's frame has been rendered. It will give you a clear understanding of how sampling and reconstruction actually work and what settings such as image scaling stand for. Hello and welcome back to Hardware Lab. The key concept of modern game sampling and rasterization process is the difference between internal and output resolutions. These two resolutions are strongly connected in their basic meaning, but they are really different in details. The ability to change your game res in the settings menu while your PC is connected to the same screen is a good example of that concept. If you don't get enough frame rate, the obvious thing to do is to decrease game resolution, right? However, your display has a constant amount of pixels. In case your screen native res is 4K, which is actually around 8.3 million pixels, you decide to go below and choose Quad HD, which is only 3.6 million. Theoretically, it means that less than half pixels on the monitor should be glowing, but in fact, this is not the case here. This is because either your GPU or a display itself apply some techniques to stretch an image. But before we touch it, let's talk about the basics of the sampling process. A monitor is actually a matrix or a grid of pixels, which in turn are just small squares. The amount of these pixels on the screen is limited, and in the end, each pixel should get some color to display an image. Basically, an image is a plane with two measurable dimensions namely X for width and Y for height. However, a 3D scene we look at playing a game has also a third dimension, Z, which stands for depth. So, to show a 3D scene on a 2D image, we need to take a grid of pixels with a specific resolution and find all geometry that intersect the center of each pixel of the grid. For example, we have a small triangle that is a set of vectors. Each vector in the triangle structure can be represented as an infinitely high detailed line. However, the representation of this triangle on a grid with a limited amount of pixels requires to color or not to color each pixel based on coverage. By default, there is only one intersection checking point that locates in the center of each pixel. Each of these checking points is called a sample. The color of the pixel depends on whether the checking point is intersected or not. This coloring process is called rasterization. In other words, it is a sample value that defines the final color of a pixel. With all that in mind, let's try to apply these techniques to rasterize the triangle with 5x5 res. The result doesn't actually look like a triangle, but definitely has something in common. So let's pick the higher res. 15 by 15 already looks a bit more impressive. In this way, no matter the final 2D image resolution that we are to render, vector's length in terms of 3D scene data is the same, but the amount of calculated data on our rasterized frame is different depending on that res. In simple terms, the more pixels an image has, the more accurate geometry is displayed. 
Now we know what internal or rendering resolution is. But what about screen or output resolution and how they are connected to each other? To clarify this, let's examine three possible cases. The first one is when internal and output resolutions are equal. The second one, internal res has fewer pixels than the output. And the third, when internal has more. Imagine you have a 4K screen and a game running with 4K as well. Then the internal res is equal to the output one. Or you could say that the ratio of that resolution is 1 to 1. It means that each output pixel can simply be colored with a value of a related internal pixel from the rasterized grid. But what if it's not the case? Remember the example with the Quad HD game running on a 4K screen. As you can imagine, a frame should be stretched somehow. In this case, rasterization provides only 3.6 million pixels instead of 8.3, which is an output value of our display resolution. It makes the ratio between internal and output res far from 1 to 1. And it means that pixels with no rasterized data should get their color somewhere else. The most common way to provide this color data is just to calculate it based on the determined values. Let's go over three popular techniques to achieve that. Nearest neighbor, bilinear interpolation and bicubic interpolation. Nearest neighbor is the most simple method, which implies copying values of adjacent pixels to a specific pixel being currently calculated. And the outcome is a bit of a shame. However, there is a bit more progressive technique – interpolation. This approach working out unknown values in between known ones. In case of bilinear interpolation, the desired value is defined by the pixels around the sort one in the 2x2 two two pixel area. This number is nothing but the weighted average. The outcome is more convincing compared with what we've got before. Yet applying the same method on 4x4 four four pixel area offers a slightly better result. So that's why it was chosen as a balance between quality and runtime. And finally, there are cases when internal res is higher than output one. Like if you chose an 8K image on the same 4K screen or so. This is covered by other techniques that are called downsampling. They are sort of doing pretty close things to interpolation, but backwards. In this case, Values of some pixels of eternal resolution, or if you prefer sub-pixels, are calculated by the algorithm to get the values for the output pixels. However, we won't go deep into that here. To sum up, the purpose of this video was to show the difference between internal and output resolutions. If they differ from each other, it doesn't mean they're incompatible or so. Hope that we explained this essential difference well, since this information is strongly required to understand the principles of image reconstruction and anti-aliasing techniques. We are going to overview them in the near future, so don't miss that. By the way, that's it for today. And as usual, stay up to date with HL.